Dakota Fanning, who stars in the film uh, as a lead, Tessa, a young girl who um, has terminal leukaemia and she's kind of trying to get everything, fill her life with everything she wants to in the time she has left. Now, she petitioned always for the role, didn't she? She was so impressed with it. Well, we were very lucky because um, when you try to put these things together, it's always pretty difficult. And um, particularly, you know, trying to sell as, as great as Jenny Downham's book, which is called Before I Die. It's quite a, quite a hard sell to any financier to say, hey, we're going to make a movie about leukemia. Um, and actually, it, it is much more about um, young love and optimism and seizing the day. But uh, Dakota, to her great credit, managed to attach herself to it and really stay with us while we raised the money. Um, and not a lot of folks in, of her, in her position do that, so we're forever grateful. And she plays a young British girl in this, doesn't she? And obviously she's, a, she's an American actress. She has a flawless accent in it, don't you think? No, she. I mean, she's a really good actress, um, full stop. But um, we also, I mean, it's quite funny because she was the only American on set, obviously. Um, and so she got to hear a lot of English accents. But also we did have, we did put her with a coach as well, and she worked brilliantly with her, so all turned out for the best. And Jeremy Irvin, as well as one of the other leads in the film, he plays her young beau, as it were, her friend to start with. How did he come on board? He came on, we, um, again, he'd done War Horse, um, and he, I was very impressed with that, and then we was very much sort of up and coming, and it's a, a very difficult role to play that one. Um, you've got to be the sort of literally the boy next door, but without being just sort of smooth and distant and, and too good looking. And he was absolutely perfect. I think he's a really good performance and a really nice guy. And Paddy Considine and Olivia Williams play uh, Dakota's mum and dad in the film, don't they? Yeah. No, Paddy came, again, just attracted by the amazing script that Ol wrote. Um, and same with Olivia. I think it's quite... She said herself the other day, I was talking to her. Um, quite often you get those mum roles where the parents are just unbelievably good at everything and super fantastic about coping. And uh, Dakota's mum in the film, played by Olivia, you know, she's got... In a way, she's sort of switched off and left her daughter to get on with it by herself a little bit. It is a difficult subject, but it's dealt with, I think, with the right gravitas, but also with the lightness of touch, because there's lots of humour in there too, isn't there? Yes, I mean, Old's a very funny chap anyway, but he also has an amazing ability to undercut, um, you know, scenes and subjects that should be taken very seriously and are very serious, but actually, by making them a bit funnier, he can make he seems to make them more real. I think there's nothing worse than a sort of, hopefully... We've, we've avoided this, but the sort of cl clawing, overly sentimental view of that serious disease is, is not what we were after. And tell me about any challenges you had when you were making Now Is Good. I mean, it was it was quite a challenge, actually. There was one um, particular time, we shot a lot of it in Brighton, obviously, and we were down there, and for some reason, which we'll, we, we had, you know, as ever, the actors' availability, they're only around for a certain time. We were just hoping that all the scenes we had to shoot outside actually had sunshine, um, and we had literally a whole week with rain either side when it was sunny. Um, so there's enough, you know, there's enough sweaty things for the producer to worry about. But, um, you know, very small budget this one as well for Dakota and um, everybody just got on with it, which was great. One of the things that's important for the central character, Tessa, played by uh, Dakota Fanning, is that she has this sort of bucket list, doesn't she, of things that she must do uh, in the time that she has left. What would you have on your bucket list if you made one? My God, that's a tough question. Um, probably just have... Um, spend a lot more time with the family, I think, mucking around with the kids and my wife and travelling a lot more, I think. That's the one thing that, that actually, in the book, given the time that she's got, she doesn't kind of go, OK, I want to see the world. And I think probably more of that, you know, get out and about and be curious. You've got your new film as well coming out uh, shortly, well, in the next few months, Seven Psychopaths. Again, completely different to Now Is Good. Seven Psychopaths is kind of, does what it says on the tin, really, doesn't it? Yes, I mean, it really is, again, written by Martin McDonough, who's a very clever guy um, and playwright, wrote in Bruges. But again, it's um, very, very funny, very, very dark and massively unexpected I mean uh, truly original and what was it that appealed to you about working with Martin again because as you said you worked with him didn't you for in Bruges I think it was I mean luckily enough I mean again you have to sort of he, he's a talented guy but luckily enough for us he wanted to work with us again so it's very much kind of like oh that's lucky um, we'll try again you know I noticed in one of the uh, TV magazines uh, about TV industry magazines trade magazines that um, Blueprint Pictures was among the 40 top UK production companies now how do you kind of get to that position and keep in that position what's that like Pete? Golly, I didn't, um, you must show me that article. I hadn't seen it, but that's good news. No, I think that you get there by just working really hard. I mean, we love what we do. Um, we keep trying to make these movies. It's not easy to do it, but um, hopefully you can just keep following your nose into stories, 
putting stuff together, working with very good talent and hoping that big ideas that people want to go and see and the movies that travel. So we just keep, keep, bashing, keep plugging away, I think. And as with Now is Good, uh, for Seven Psychopaths, you've got a great cast as well, haven't you? You've got uh, Colin Farrell, who was in In Bruges, which you worked on as well, uh, Sam Rockwell, Christopher Walken, loads of people in there. How did you get all this like, top talent on board? I think really, um, it's, again, it's down to the writing. I mean, Martin's script was amazing. Obviously, In Bruges did well um, for everybody. Colin Farrell won a, a Golden Globe for that. There's a nice relationship between those two. And it's a really, I think people are always just looking for really good parts and the actors are no different and it's they're just very interesting so they come they gravitate towards nicely written characters and what's next for you Pete I am trying to get a number of books um, into production next year and also another play that we optioned which we've turned in which we're turning into a movie called posh which is about uh, a group of reprobate Oxford um, undergraduates which things take a nasty turn so we'll see if we can get that going I look forward to seeing that and lots of luck with Now is Good and also with Seven Psychopaths too. Thank you very much indeed. Very nice chatting to you.